Hey guys, I have kind of a sore throat, so I can't yell too much, but Gone pissed me off. There was nothing that interested me that came out last week. Um, Project X looked annoying. The Lorax, not my cup of tea, and it didn't get very good reviews anyway. And um, so I had to look at stuff that had come out, you know, prior. I usually don't like to watch movies like The Artist or any of those Oscar bait movies in the theaters. I much en I enjoy them much more when I see them on DVD. Like, I liked The King's Speech. I liked Social Network. But if I saw those in the theaters, I don't know. When, you go into, when you're paying that much for a movie that you expect to be the best movie of the year, that sets you up for disappointment. Um, Star Wars Episode One, I really did consider... But the 3D got way too bad reviews, and um, I don't want to spend that much money on a movie I've already seen, even though I don't remember hating it that much. Uh, but I only saw it when it came out initially, and at that time I pretty much enjoyed everything. And even then I'd say it wasn't that good, but so I decided to skip that. Then Journey 2, uh, that didn't capture, capture my interest at all. It just occurred to me not too long ago that that was a sequel to Journey, of the, Journey to the Center of the Earth, which had Brendan Fraser, uh, and I didn't care for that one at all, so I had no real interest to see the sequel. Um, so Gone, it wasn't a movie I really wanted to see. I pretty much could tell what was going to happen based on the trailers. It looked really generic, like something you'd see on the Lifetime channel. And um, But I felt like I had to, but pretty much I got what I expected, plus a little less in terms of quality. Uh, what I hate about Gone is that it's so half-hearted. Nobody really seemed to care when making this movie. I hate it when movies just waste our time by being so uninspired. Uh, like the Underworld one that came out, I think, a month ago, uh, or maybe two months ago. The Underworld 4. That movie just felt like they were just going through the motions, that nobody really cared. And to me, when you get paid as much as they do, you shouldn't. Come, you shouldn't make a movie with that kind of attitude. And if you're, if maybe they did really care, the movie just came out bad. Then that's just as bad. But um, you know, these days, when, th when with the economy so crappy, uh, I don't have as much money as I used to. So whenever I do spend money to see a movie, I am spending more money than I probably should. And uh, that, and it really makes me angry when it just feels like nobody really tried. At least when it comes to the behind-the-scenes people. So, the script pretty much can be summed up as it's very wasteful. Nothing in this movie felt relevant. It offers plenty of ideas, some good, some bad, but it doesn't really roll with them, and it never convinces us that any of the red herrings are an actual possibility. Like, uh, for example... The film continuously suggests that she might be insane, that perhaps all of it's just in her head and um, the sister just went out partying or something. Okay, that could have been interesting, but we know that can't be the case for a few reasons. For one, we know the movie's way too ger to, generic to actually consider that. Two, she never acts insane enough. She's very lucid, she's very calm and calculating, and yeah, she does get angry, but it's always, I can understand why she's becoming angry or frustrated. I never thought of her as insane, but it's weird because when you see her in flashbacks, yeah, she does seem kind of insane. So, I never really bought that theory. Um, they c consistently offer suggestions about where she is, um, the sister that I'm talking about. So, did she go out partying? Um, they imply that she may have been an alcoholic in the past. You don't really see that based on the last time you see the sister. You just see her ca casually talking to her boyfriend on the phone. You never understand, you know, why would she suddenly just fall off the wagon that late? Because I, I think it's implied it was pretty late. I don't remember, though. I could be wrong there. Um, you know, another suggestion that the movie itself seems to take really seriously is that she just fled from the stress. She was tired of taking care of her crazy sister. And when the main cop uh, says something that that was probably what happened, the movie suddenly like stops dead in its tracks. Like, oh, could that have really happened? And the main actress is obviously considering that. And the music is kind of dramatic. And uh, But we don't get that either because, once again, right before we saw her before she was supposedly abducted, she seemed fine, she seemed happy, she seemed genuinely caring about her sister. So why did they even offer that when we know that isn't going to be the case? So that entire potential psychosis subplot, completely underused and pointless. Then what's even worse is that the film 
has so many potential suspects, but then you know they aren't going to turn out to be the killer. Or, yeah, the killer. Um, the, pretty, the film has a format, or I guess structure, that's very similar to Taken with Liam Neeson, and that is just the character goes from one location, talks to a character, maybe interrogates him, and then moves to the next. It worked much better with Taken because that is an action movie structure. We're watching that movie just to see Liam Neeson kick ass. So we don't really mind that there's no real big revelation. Um, there isn't really anything stand out in terms of the script. That entire movie existed just to prove how awesome Liam Neeson was. And that's why I liked it. This film might have been going for the same thing, but it isn't an action film. It's just kind of a suspense thriller. The best we get is a cat jumping out of a closet, or you know those stupid-ass scares where somebody sneaks up on a person and grabs their shoulder, you know, which scares them, but they weren't really meaning to scare them. Biggest cliche scare ever. That's pretty much what you're getting with this type of movie. It's just, you know, she goes from one location, yeah, she'll occasionally take out a gun and threaten somebody and yell at them and maybe in one case beat them up, but for the most part, it seems like it wants to just be very suspense-driven, um, at least sort of character driven, but it fails. And I think a main problem with that is that this structure does not work with any kind of mystery. When it comes to most whodunit type uh, films, those types of mysteries, you have to know everybody about equally. So these, per these this or that person might be the killer. Scream, for example. You know, you're spending a lot of time with all these people um, who are with the main character, so you can actually try to guess who is the killer. This person, they'll have somebody act suspicious, but then they'll never show up again in the entire movie. They're like, they're, I guess, literally one-shot characters. So you know that the last person they're going to throw suspicion on is going to be the killer. So anything prior to that is just wasted time. In a way, it's, it reminds me of... a. Uh, Red Riding Hood, which actually starred the same actress, where that movie like will really throws um, suspense on certain characters, but we know that they're not going to be the killer just because the movie is being too obvious about it. The person that's going to turn out to be the killer is the last person who you begin to suspect. And uh, this one, though, it's sort of like that, but then the movie isn't sure if it wants to throw suspicion on them. So you'll have the first guy, for example, you know, he's described as being kind of squirrely, and uh, when she meets him, yeah, he's kind of hostile, a little suspicious. And I'm trying to think, what is the movie trying to say here? Could he have been the guy who did it? Uh, is she in danger? Why are they trying to make this guy so creepy? And um, I presume that was the intent, was that, you know, it's suggesting that this guy might be the ba bad guy, but you know it's not going to be. It's like the movie knows that you know it's not going to turn out to be him, but it has to fill out its screen time somehow. So it continuously does that. And then other times, it'll kind of bring up a person might be the killer, but then they never follow through with it. There's no payoff. For example, and I know if you have a brand, you'll know that this isn't going to be the case, the boyfriend, the last person we see talking to the girl. In fact, he even suggests that he's going to come over. But they never, after that, suggest that he could be the killer. Um, the main girl never even seems to suspect him. So why did they even have that there? And then there's this whole thing with another character who I won't spoil, because honestly, I thought this would be the killer and I was wrong, but it wasn't a surprise in a good way, uh, and I'll get a little bit more into that a little later. But there's this one character who you think is going to pay off, there's going to be some payoff with him somehow. Either he's going to turn out to be a friend or he's going to turn out to be a killer. He just kind of vanishes halfway through the film. They never even do anything with that guy. And then by the time the killer is revealed, you realize that this entire movie just was a pointless waste of time. It was some... Well, I'm just going to say this. If you've seen Friday the 13th, the original one, it's the same kind of twist. Except with Friday the 13th, I considered that to be sort of a... Uh, it's sort of satirical on the, those kind of thrillers at the time. But, uh, or it probably wasn't, it was probably just lazy writing, but it came across like that, and it didn't bug me in that film. And this film, though, considering it spends so much time on asking us, is this person the killer, is that person the killer, it just comes as a complete, uh, just a waste of time, and it pissed me off. I hate it when movies uh, go down that route, because it makes it just such a cheat, and um, so that pissed me off. And is there anything else I could say? Because there was a lot of stuff, but I, I only saw it Friday, and I'm already forgetting the film, so I might be forgetting some of my other major complaints. 
Um, I'll talk a little about the good things. The acting is pretty good, and the main actress, I thought, did a great job. I actually think she's a very talented actress. It seems like the movies that she chooses are movies that I don't care about to begin with, or bad ones like this and Red Riding Hood. Um, but she does a really good job. I like how she can be both you know, strong and determined, but also vulnerable. And when she's scared, you could see it, but it's not overplayed. In fact, the best scene in the movie works partially because of her, and that's when it starts building up to the finale. Um, she's in a park, and it just, it's a really creepy and well-executed scene. The park location is very menacing. The cinematography is making it seem even spookier. The music is really low-key and suspenseful. And what her expressions, and the way she's clearly starting to really freak out, is very genuine. And you feel that that is a great scene. If the entire movie was like that, it would have been awesome. Um, but unfortunately, they ruin it with a really abrupt and half-assed finale, too. I'm like, is that it? That's seriously it. I was expecting some sort of t final twist at the end, um, but I didn't get it. There is also a twist involving another character. That was kind of good, too, but uh, it didn't make up for any of the other half-assed writing. And even then, I think I've seen something like that before. Yeah, in fact, it's a Saw 2 esque twist. Um, if you've seen that movie, you might know what I'm talking about. So that's really it. It was just a very, very by-the-numbers, it deserves to be on Lifetime Channel thriller. It has nothing really going for it besides the actors, and they could have all been in better movies than this. You'll, you'll see everything that's coming pretty much before it happens, and the stuff that you don't see coming is only because the film is cheating us, the audience. And uh, it was just very bland, generic, and below average. And that's even worse than that, because even some bad movies have something going for it. Like, Red Riding Hood has a lot of interesting visuals, good or bad, but at least there was a lot of effort there that can make it a reason for you to see that. With this one, there is no real reason to see it, unless you're a diehard fan of the actress. So, best case scenario, wait on TV or don't watch it at all. Uh, so that's it. If you want to read my written review, the link is in my description. I've been adding a lot more stuff to my website um, in terms of indexes and um, some information on critiquing the critics. Uh, once again, if you haven't gone there, please check that out. That's also in the description. Follow me on Twitter if you're interested in that. There might be a critiquing the critics on the website out um, either tomorrow, Wednesday, or Thursday. I'm not sure, and if there isn't, there will at least be a Kick-Ass of Awesome episode. So that is that. I'll see you guys later.